What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for another VOD review. Today we're doing another talkie type discussion video. I don't know if I said, but the reason why I'm doing so many of these talkie type videos is because I'm on vacation as these videos are coming out. I wanted to give you guys content to watch, but also like I can't do like a VOD review of somebody. I'm, you know, out going for a, for a hike, touching grass, going to the beach, uh, having lots of, okay, I cannot say that, but um, today we are going to talk about Set 11, the, the response to it has largely been very, very negative from a lot of people. Viewership does not seem that amazing on like streams, on, you know, I'll even say on my own YouTube videos and stuff like that. This is not the best the channel has ever done. I'm still, I'm still fine, especially because it's not my real job. Um, but you know, it's not like every single video is popping off. Uh, certainly not the case at all. So let's talk about that. First, let's look at some stats and talk about, okay, just like where is set 11 compared to previous sets? In set 11, this is Twitch viewership, average monthly viewers. Set 11 came out in end of March. This March, April is really set 11 release. As you can see in a lot of previous sets, there's a pretty big spike when like a, a major set comes out. I believe set 10's around here. I think this is nine. Um, and you know, maybe this is like eight, uh, 8.5. Uh, there's like 9.5 and somewhere in there and like 10 is is around here december that's like vegas and all that kind of stuff not sure if this is eight or, or something like that but you can see this around here set 11 is certainly one of the smaller spikes in recent memory lower than 10 certainly lower than nine lower than whatever this is eight maybe in, in seven here perhaps and then like set six is way back here and then like this is like you know peak tft early early like people i think you know watching for like the beta codes and stuff like that i i believe so so Set 11, certainly not amazing viewership. Um, Mocha made this really, really cool graphic. This is the interest of, uh, I believe this is, yeah, this is searching TFT comps on Google. And so you can see whenever major sets come out, there's big spikes and people looking for TFT comps, but around set 11, it's a little bit lower than 10 and nine, still better than eight, lower than seven, which is kind of crazy and a little bit higher than six. So a little bit worse than previous sets, not horrible, um but but certainly not incredible it did take a little bit longer to level off like a lot of these are sharp tick ups and then like a, a big sharp tick down you can see for 10 but set 11 took a while for it to get lower but still it's now where we still have like a month left in this set and it is very very low down here low you know around the bottoms for a lot of previous sets below even the bottom for set nine um so something um but I would say if it was just these two things, maybe I wouldn't make this video, but the other big thing is just player sentiment. So me and Mr. Kian, he's been high ranked on ladder a lot. He's he's done very, very well in a lot of tournaments, said calling it quits at 11. Um, overall burned out last couple of patches haven't helped. And then he, he talks about some of his issues with this. Uh, I'd rank the set in the middle, he says. I liked encounters as a concept, but some implementations were very frustrating. Um, Kevin Parker, fantastic player, went second at Vegas, really, really just, just absolute beast of the game, um, complaining about um, rolling down on A with insane economy and just missing. That's the most frustrating part about the game, just losing for no reason. Um, Ramkev, who is uh, a noted yapper, also, let me move this uh, around over here because maybe, hopefully you guys could see the other tweets, um, but Ramkev, uh, somebody who, who notedly complains a lot, but still, he says that he's basically quitting set 11. Um, another one, of course, uh, you, you guys have to know, Kai, Kai quit set 11 uh, a few weeks ago. Why I stopped playing set 11, made an entire video about it. Look, I'm not that, I, I personally, if I quit a set, I wouldn't be that self-absorbed to make a YouTube video about that. I'm just kidding, just kidding. I love Kai. But you know, Kai completely cut, uh, quitting the set. I don't know what this guy, like this guy's, what, what is this guy even doing with his life now? All he does is play TFT. He Yoon even a few weeks ago, reading the set 11 patch notes and directions. Yeah, I lost all hope in set 11 and waiting for a real next two sets. No personal attack, just expressing my disappointment. Um, so let, let's turn on a dish so bad of him playing set 11. What else? Um, and talk through some of this stuff because I think it's blown me away how negative the reception has been to this set. And I, and I'm just, I'm sort of left questioning why. Why do people really, really not like set 11, it seems? It seems like sentiment is really, really low. I have heard interesting things. I know I saw a clip from Mortdog where he said uh, encounters are one of the best received set mechanics in a long time, um, which is, you know, a, an entire, I don't know, we have to, we have to talk about that in, in the video. But I have a few things I want to go down and talk about, you know, why it seems like player interest is lower this set. And what I really want is to hear from you guys down below is to let me know why you guys don't like the set. Because I'm sure there are a lot of you guys who 
will see this video and be like, I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna say exactly why I hate this set. It's because Bort Dog is a fraud. It's because Ken Woohoo spends all his time looking at Lilia picks and he's not balancing the game. <laughs> but, um, but look, l l let's get into some of this stuff. So the first most obvious reason why perhaps this set isn't enjoyed is the, is the set mechanic, is encounters. Kai's video about why he quit the set is basically entirely about encounters, about the variance that encounters add to TFT, where encounters are something that can be completely out of your uh, control, basically. Like sometimes you'll just get an encounter and it's just something so, so insanely beneficial for the rest of the lobby. Like I, I've had spots where I'm playing a one cost reroll comp and I get the encounter that makes my one cost, my rolls cost one for the rest of the stage. That's so good for me and so bad for everyone else. And, and that feels good for me, but if you're someone else in my lobby, that might feel bad. Or the other examples, of course, there's a carousel with an encounter on it, and you're wind streaking because you have a really strong opener, and it's radiant item carousel. Well, all of a sudden, you've just lost multiple placements because you played wind streak, because you had a good spot to play wind streak. Are you supposed to full open because there's going to be an encounter carousel? That doesn't really make sense. So there are many scenarios where encounters can majorly screw over your game. And I think that is a pain point for a lot of people, and... Uh, stop me because I will talk too much about this, but it does raise a question of, I feel like every single set, as every every single set, since set six, there have been major gripes about the set mechanic. Um, and prior to that, set five, we had shadow items that ruined the set, according to people, and then they fixed it in 5.5 with radiant items and like the radiant blessing, which was fine. But so... 5.5, and, and the sets before that I didn't really play, so I can't speak to them about how good or bad the set mechanics were, but 5.5, ruined by set mechanic is what people will say. Five uh, or 5.0, ruined by set mechanic, 5.5, pretty good. Set six, great, people liked augments, but set seven, people said dragons ruined the set mechanic, or ruined the entire set, and 7.5, people still didn't really like dragons. Set eight, people said hero augments, really just completely you messed up with your ability to play the set and have a good time, so people hated that. Set nine, people said encounters ruined the set and, and made it so that the games were just completely effed. Um, and set 10, people, I would say, liked Chosen or, or Headliner for a while, and then eventually they started to turn on Headliner when it, there was the idea that there were these secret Headliner rules that people didn't like. And now, set 11, encounters, and, and people seem to, to really, really dislike encounters. So... It seems like the only set mechanic that people have liked over all of the sets were augments. And honestly, it's my opinion that if they if they had released augments, if we went back and played set six right now, people would complain about augments. People, I think, liked it a lot for the novelty at the time, but people would complain about how imbalanced the augments are. You can get an innovator soul and get plus two innovator and just get to play seven innovator at level five. Who is balancing the game? Nobody. Um, so, and like, you know, people delve into the data now, they're, they're much better at that kind of stuff. If we went back right now, I, I think people would hate that kind of stuff. So, okay. If every set, the set mechanic has been bad. And like I said, I don't want to talk about this too much. I really want to keep this focused on set 11, but just a little, I've, I've talked about this before. I wonder if set mechanics are necessary in TFT. I wonder, I, I always think about the way that Magic the Gathering does it, where Magic the Gathering doesn't often have like a game warping thing in a set, but they'll have like, a special mechanic. Sorry, need a sip of water. Got something in my throat. They'll have like a... This set introduces blood tokens. Blood tokens are a token that you can sacrifice to do this thing. This, uh, you know, set of magic card introduces the day and night cycle, you know, or I mean, it really plays around with the day and night cycle where some cards will interact with the day and night cycle. And that's not really a set mechanic. It it allows games to change a bit, but it doesn't completely warp how the game's played. I wonder if TFT would do better with something like that, something not so game warping. And I really thought encounters would be something that are not so game warping. And in my opinion, they, they often aren't that game warping. Um, but I wonder if, you know, maybe it's just a really interesting trait. People love Exalted. People have loved Mirage, Admin in the past. Maybe the set mechanic just has to be a really cool trait that you can play around. Is that enough? I think some people have said that that won't keep casual players' attention if the, the set mechanic is just one, you know, interesting, uh, you know, five cost unit or interesting um, comp or something like that. But I, I don't know if that's actually true. It, it's certainly 
I don't think necessarily proven one way or another, but I, I do think TFT, the dev team seems to think that they need set mechanics. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next point because I'll yap about this forever if I don't talk about it. The other big thing that I think a lot of people have talked about is that there's no mid set. And then we moved to this no mid set version of TFT and people said, well, you know, like uh, Riot said, a mid set's not worth it. We put all this work into developing a mid set and like a few people come back. You saw it in those little graphs. There are a few tiny little spikes for the mid sets, um, but overall not too many people come back. They really want every set to be like a big event where people come back to play TFT. And sometimes a mid set is not enough to bring people back to, to play TFT. And so it's not worth the dev time to spend all this time developing new traits, developing new champions when you could spend that on the next set and then have all those like more people come back. It also allows us to have these longer sets where balance can be achieved, which is something I re that that is the last point and I think maybe the most important one and, and we'll talk about that. And I mean, I could see it. I, I do think this set has certainly got a bit stale, which once again, we'll, we'll I'll get to that more in my last uh, point, but a four month set does feel kind of long. I looked at the pass for this set for the second like act of this set, whatever it is, we have another, as I'm recording this, we have another like 50 days of this set, like over like a month and a half of this set left, probably as this video is coming out. That is, that's a lot. That is a long, long so time to be playing the exact same set. Um, And so I could see that burning people out and just people in general just can't play a, a set of TFT for that long. Now, what does that mean for the TFT dev team? I mean, the the optimal thing would be, all right, we just more frequent TFT sets. Instead of doing three sets a year, we do four sets a year and they're every three months. But that is an entire, an entire month that every set has to go out sooner. It's a lot of work. I believe the way Magic does sets is every few months. Uh, like, I don't think a, a Magic set lasts longer than three months. And they also have like supplementary products that come out, which... I mean, that's that's weird because Magic has like different types of uh, like people play Commander, which like doesn't isn't a set by set format. People just play all their cards. So like it's it's not exactly the reasonable. Um, My nose always gets itchy when I record videos. I don't, I don't know why, Um, but it's not like a set by set mechanic uh, thing. But I, I believe their sets are their sets are are shorter than Magic's sets. But yeah, um, that's that's like another idea is to make sets shorter again. Maybe four months is just too long for a set of TFT. I, I'm not really sure. I, I I do think this set definitely feels a little stale, but I the big the big reason why I want to ask you guys these questions is that I don't really hate the set. I actually enjoy the set a lot. I like encounters as a mechanic and I'm I'm having fun with the set still, but I also don't grind out a thousand games. I have under 300 games played of this set so far. So that's surely plays into it a bit as well. But um, that's another thing is that there's no mid set. Um, and the third thing I want to get through before I get to the big thing is the competitive format. The competitive format has burned so many people out, I would say, because they don't care to play for this tournament where, uh, you know, I'm I'm not playing in this weekend's tournament, which may have already happened by the time this video comes out uh, because I'm going to be on vacation. But even if I wasn't on vacation, I mean, I would love to play in the tournament, um, but it's just I'm a little bit like lower on it than I would normally be just because of the fact that um, it's it's just kind of not fun to play six days if you make it to the final day of a tournament. It's just too long, really, in, in my opinion, and the competition is low. I have talked about all this stuff before, so I won't talk into it too much. Um, the other thing is that for people who want to play competitive TFT and who have day jobs, uh, you know, who, who can't get out of their job in time to, to go play a TFT tournament, some of those people just don't get to play competitive TFT. And that's a huge demotivating factor, right? If you just simply cannot play TFT because competitively, because you have to work on Mondays or Fridays, which I think a lot of people do, and they can't take off work every time there's a tournament three times a set, three times in a four month period, you have to take off Monday and Friday. That's a lot of vacation days taken. Or if you don't get paid vacation days, that's a lot of days that you are not working and not making money. That is really, really tough. And so I think that is a portion of it. I think everything that I've talked about is a, is a portion of it where people don't get to play competitive TFT this set, which stinks. Um, it, it really sucks. And so I hope they fix that, fix that for next set, which, you know, I've talked about um, before. But the last point, what I want to get to, I think probably the most important point and the most kind of funny one, honestly, is stale meta is we have been 
since for the, for the last like three patches on basically the same meta where most of the four cost lines are viable where three cost reroll is pretty weak and and maybe you know because the patch will have come out by the time i posted this video so hopefully three cost reroll is is like actually good again because they've they buffed three cost odds i like that but we've had a few patches in a row prior to this most recent patch and even this patch is pretty small in the changes where the meta has r remained very very similar which is funny because before this change to no mid sets came out you know what i said i said well i think the best part of a set is when we get to this point when the set is really really well balanced everything is really really fair and we we all we get to play on really really balanced tft patch and uh and yeah and like everybody gets to you know all of the lines are viable it's really really skill expressive like that's the best tft and i wonder if that's just not actually the case for a lot of people i think for a lot of people the meta has been so similar for so so long units like alawi being just an insane unit for like the entirety of the set units like yone being good early and then being put in the dumpster for over a month things like that where like Overall, I would say the game is pretty balanced, but there are a few things like that that are off. And I think a lot of people just really, really dislike that. And they don't like that there's not a lot of change. And it's so funny because I would have thought that this situation where, you know, we, we are at a balanced meta would be what, what people enjoy. You know, people like a really, really balanced meta that's very, very skill expressive. But I wonder if that's just not the case. And that at the end of the day, people want that change. They want an unbalanced meta so that you know, one day, Kaisa, the, this Kaisa comp is really, really broken. And then a patch comes out and then, oh my God, everybody's playing Ash and I get to play this Ash comp. And, you know, like one cost reroll is, is like terrible for most of the set. And then like Riot makes some change and all of a sudden everybody is playing Kha'Zix reroll and they're playing Darius reroll and the set completely changes. You know, I wonder, I really, really wonder if that is a better world for, for TFT where the, the meta actually is unbalanced and changes more frequently. It really, to me, seems like that is the biggest issue with this set is that our last few patches have been very similar and that makes people not wanna play. They say, okay, the meta is solved. That's that's something that uh, me, Mr. Kian talked about in his Twitter post. He said, the meta has been solved for so long that you know the game is just not that interesting to me because once the meta is solved, these fights, he was talking about fights coming down to being like 50-50 coin flips on what side you are late game, which you know I don't really, I mean, it's certainly true to uh, a degree, but I think there's so much depth in a game like TFT that that's not that big of a deal. But also, he's you know played way more games this set than me and higher rank than me, so you know how, how can I disagree with him? I mean, fair, fair enough. Um, but yeah, that's in my opinion, I think that's been the the biggest issue actually is the staleness of the meta for for most people. When I look on Reddit, when I look on Twitter, when I look at my YouTube comments, so many people are just like, oh my god, this patch it just changes nothing, man. Everyone's just gonna play the exact same stuff you know, this X thing is going to still be broken or X thing is still going to suck. And I, I just after experiencing this, I really, really feel like perhaps TFT needs more change. And whether that's what I talked about before, where we, we shorten the length of sets, where we just cannot have a stable meta for this long, or maybe, maybe it is just just having less stability for the sake of less stability i'm not sure it's it's so crazy to me that this is the situation that we find ourselves in where people it seems like don't want balance because perfect balance is just annoying to play and maybe maybe i'm wrong i i really want to hear from you guys and and i'd love for people to tell me no like you're wrong like i like when a meta is is really really balanced like this but you know it's encounters or but it's this thing you know i would love to hear that that people have because that people have a different take because I don't want TFT to, to to stray away from being balanced. A lot of people have TFT conspiracy theories where they say, oh, you know what? Mort doesn't want the game to be balanced. That's why he's doing these seesaw balance changes and balance thrashing and stuff. They, they want there to be balance back and forth because that makes people buy more skins or something like that. That's what people would always say in League back in the day. They're like, they made a Kali broken so people buy a Kali skins, which is another conspiracy theory, theory that I don't really agree with, but hey, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe some conspiracy theories are right, I think. I don't know. Are there, what's a conspiracy theory that's true? Tell me in the comments down below on, on like a, like, tell me, tell me what you think about this set and then tell me what's a conspiracy theory that actually happened. But you know, nothing sad, like something that's like funny, I'm down for it. I don't want to leave like full of vibe or anything like that. But yeah, like I, I really don't want it to be the case that 
we have to have unbalanced CFT, and that's the only way for us to have fun. Because I like balanced CFT. I like having all of these different comps be viable. And so much of the past, you know, multiple TFT sets has been chasing, you know, perfect balance, has been chasing getting to a spot where the set's balanced. And I really, I do feel like the set has been pretty balanced overall. Um, I, I really... I, I like how the balance has been for this set, which is, you know, one thing that maybe separates me from some other people, but I'm pretty happy with the balance. I guess one thing that I didn't really talk about in this video, and I kind of touched on a little bit, kind of like hinted at, is that the diversity of play styles has been very low. Perhaps that is something where so much of the set has just been four cost real. It's, there's a patch where three cost real was broken and it was all three cost real. And then after that, it was four cost, not reroll, but you know, four cost fast eight uh, type stuff. And so, for the majority of the set, you haven't really wanted to roll on six. You haven't really wanted to roll on seven. And so, yeah, we went from like broken reroll meta into broken four cost meta. Maybe that's it. That like there aren't a lot of one cost reroll comps, two cost reroll comps, three cost reroll comps. But there's still a decent amount even on this patch. You know, there's the Kog'Maw reroll, which works. There is uh, like the, the ghostly type stuff, the Zyra and the Zoe type rerolls that work. Um, there's like a Loon reroll in certain spots. They, they do exist. I don't think it's that egregious. Uh, I think the meta is pretty balanced, which is why... Yeah, I, I just don't know. That, that's why it's it's so surprising to me that people are so low on this set because I feel like the balance has been good. I like the I like the set mechanic personally, but I know some people don't. So, yeah, I, I that's uh, those are my main points. I also think uh, Dish Soap is not the strongest person in this lobby, so he's probably going to die soon. But yeah, I mean, let me know what you guys think about this. I'm I'm really really curious to hear you guys' thoughts because I really. I just don't know. I, I really don't know. The I, I put out all of these ideas as like possibilities, but I put them out as possibilities because I am not sure. Ooh, we actually did win this fight. Holy top two. Um, I, I I put all this this stuff out because I'm really not sure why people don't like this set, and I've heard different things from different people. Um, but you know, some people are like, I miss my four costs when I roll down, which is just like that was the Kevin Parker tweet, and like other people have talked about this. But I mean, that's gonna happen in every team. I mean, I haven't talked about it. I didn't talk about it in this video, but there's the bag size idea. Like, maybe that's something else. I'm really just throwing out ideas for you guys to latch onto in the comments. But, you know, like, there's the bag size change that people uh, didn't like, where, you know, like, it's more of a of a problem being, like, contested, which really happened with, uh, it, it was, like, an issue with headliners, and then they kind of kept it for this set because they liked it. And, you know, maybe people agree, maybe people disagree. Um, but, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.